Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on switching to mouse and keyboard. By the way, the reason that I'm starting the gameplay here instead of showing the first two kills is because I was getting insane micro stutters and none of the graphics were loaded in, so I'd rather not force you to watch that stuff. And this was before the patch yesterday where Epic screwed up pubs and removed health and mats per kill, so maybe it will be reverted by the time I upload this, but it's not looking good. Anyways, for those of you who don't already know this, I switched from console and controller to PC, keyboard, and mouse in July of last year. I think I had a very successful and quick transition to keyboard and mouse, so I want to share my personal experience and give some tips to those making the switch themselves. I've seen a ton of comments asking for this video, so I want to cover this specific part Part more in depth while my console to PC progression video I made a couple months ago was more of a broad overview. As always I'll leave timestamps on the screen now for each section of the video if you want to skip around but as always I suggest you watch the video completely through to make your transition as seamless and easy as possible. So the first section which I feel like most transition videos don't ever cover is picking out your peripherals mainly your mouse and keyboard. I'll start with your mouse, which is probably more important than your keyboard because in reality there's not a huge difference between a $50 mechanical keyboard and a $150 mechanical keyboard other than maybe lighting functions or different macros. But I currently use a $150 mouse and started with a $50 mouse and I'll tell you guys that there is a huge difference between the two. Having a mouse that you're comfortable with and that caters towards your specific playstyle and keybinds will definitely help you take your game to the next level. So if you haven't found the perfect mouse already, or you kind of don't know how you could, well don't worry because I got you guys covered. The first thing you want to do is just measure your hand from the base of your hand to the tip. So this is going to give you a rough estimate of what mice will be too big or too small for your hands. Next thing is go and figure out what grip style you have. So a grip style is just the way that you grip and hold your mouse while you play. Every player has a different grip style, but there's kind of three broad styles that most people's grips fall under. Palm, fingertip, and claw. Palm grip is the standard grip for most people where your entire palm rests on the body of your mouse and then your fingers lay flat on the mouse side buttons. My brother uses this grip style. Fingertip is exactly as it sounds like where your fingertips rest on the mouse buttons and your palm doesn't touch the mouse at all. The grip and the stability comes from your thumb and your pinky or your pinky and your ring finger which grip the left and right sides of your mouse. Last is the claw grip which is sort of a hybrid between fingertip and palm where the back of your palm rests on the mouse but your fingers and thumbs are angled toward the mouse buttons and sides. This gives it a claw like appearance and hence the name claw grip. Personally I use a claw grip and that's just what's most comfortable for me. So now that we have a rough estimate of our hand size and our grip style, we can move on to what mouse style and features we want. The two styles of mice that we see in Fortnite are normal FPS mice and then MMO or MOBA mice. FPS mice are just the standard left click, right click mice that you see most people use. It probably has two or three side buttons with a DPI button under the scroll wheel to adjust your sensitivity. Some examples of this are like the Logitech G403, the Logitech G Pro Wireless, the Final Mouse Air 58, and pretty much anything else with the standard design. MOBA or MMO mice are given that name because they were used in games like League of Legends and World of Warcraft where you have a bunch of different skills that can be used but not necessarily at the same time. This is why we see MOBA mice with 12 side buttons. These mice aren't as common in Fortnite as FPS mice, but a bunch of well-known players like TSM Daquan, Complexity Zill, and I think at one point Atlantis Magin used this style of mice. There's also ambidextrous mice like the Logitech G Pro Wireless, which means they have perfectly symmetrical bodies, so you can use them if you're right or left-handed. These are getting more popular, but they're often more expensive mice. When deciding which style of mice you want to use, you have to keep in mind the keybinds that you plan to use. So if you go with an FPS mouse, you'll be limited by only two or three side buttons, but if you decide to use a MOBA mouse, you'll have up to 12, but it will also take a lot more getting used to. The last thing you want to decide upon is the mouse's weight. So most people, like myself, prefer lighter mice, as it's just easier to make smaller adjustments because the mouse is lighter and you have to use less force to move it. There's no evidence that prove lighter mice are better, but it's just something that most people prefer, whether you're on low or high sense. Just thinking about it, like on low sense, you're swinging your arm around, so you want a lighter mouse instead of having to swing a brick around for 8 hours. And if you're on high sense, you're not moving your mouse as much, so your adjustments are quicker with a lighter mouse. That's why we saw the insane hype for the Ninja Final Mouse, which is 58 grams, and the G Pro Wireless, which is 80 grams. Any mouse below 85 grams or so probably falls under the light category, and then anything under 60 is insanely light, like the Final Mouse. 
85 to maybe 125 grams or so is a normal or medium mouse weight. A Logitech G403, which is what I used to use, falls in this category at around 100 grams. And of course, anything above 125 grams is pretty heavy, like the Logitech G502, which is an absolute brick compared to the final mouse because it weighs like three times more, I think at 170 grams. So with all this in mind, your grip style, your length, your weight, and all that good stuff, I advise you to go to rocketjumpninja.com and find the perfect mouse for yourself. If you go to his top 40 list, you can see his rankings for the current best mice, and if you click on any of them, you get a review of the mouse, specific mouse details like its weight, and also a hand size guide to see if your hand and grip style will work for that specific mouse. If you don't know who Rocket Jump Ninja is already, he's a YouTuber who reviews mice, so you can just go to his YouTube channel and look at reviews for them too, but his website is also really helpful. If you can, maybe try walking into a Best Buy or some computer store and try out the mouse yourself in person, as you want to be comfortable with your mouse, and it's probably the most important thing that you'll spend money on. When I first switched over, I started with the G403, which I liked a lot, but I didn't like the slack from the wire. So I moved over to the G703, which is the wireless version of the G403, and I used that for 3 or 4 months when I decided I want to get something lighter. Now I'm on the G Pro Wireless, which is 80 grams, and is by far my favorite mouse because of how light it is, how well it fits my hand, and my grip style. For those wondering, I use a claw grip like I said before, and I have around a 22 centimeter size hand. For keyboards, we won't go as in depth because the only real difference is the size or the switches of them. You obviously want a mechanical keyboard, so you have to decide what size you want. There's full length keyboards, 10 keyless, or TKLs, which don't have the number pad. Then there's 75%, which remove a lot of the stuff except the arrow keys and a few buttons. And then there's 60%, which is the smallest keyboard you can get. The benefit of a smaller keyboard is that you have more room for your mouse, so unless you're like Poach or Tifu and you tilt your keyboard horizontally, you want more room so you can move your mouse around on your mouse pad. I've been using a Logitech G610, which is a full-sized keyboard, and it's pretty nice, but I recently ordered a Ducky 1-2 Mini, which is a 60% size keyboard, and the same one that Tifu has. Switches are just the things that activate the key when you press down. There's so many switches that I can't really go over all of them in one video, as they all have different feels, sounds, and actuation times. My current keyboard has cherry red switches, and the Ducky keyboard I'm getting has cherry silver or speed switches. If you don't know much about switches, most people have cherry red or cherry brown, and you can just buy a switch tester to test different brands like cherry or Romer G or Gatoron, and then there's more options within those brands like cherry reds, blues, browns, and tons more. Overall though, you definitely want a mechanical keyboard instead of that crap school computer membrane keyboard stuff. The exact size and switches are all personal preference and what you can afford though, and one isn't necessarily better than the other, so just pick what you like best. Now that we found the perfect peripherals, which honestly makes up a majority of switching to mouse and keyboard, we can look at keybinds. So if you guys haven't seen my extremely in-depth keybinds guide, I definitely think you should check it out. I talk about popular keybinds and recommendations for each specific build or ability like crouching and cover pretty much everything you need. What I want to talk about in this video though is how you should be practicing and quickly getting used to your keybinds. Something I always get asked is if it's okay to not use a number keybind or maybe a specific keybind like two. I've been in that situation before because when I switched I was just like you guys, it felt weird to reach your ring finger up and over or down to the left. Pretty much moving anything other than your index finger feels weird when you first switch to keyboard and mouse. What you guys need to realize and understand is that your fingers have basically no dexterity unless you play the guitar. When I first switched over, I could barely hit the number 2 key because it always felt awkward. After playing for a couple hours every day and hitting the 2 key a lot, it felt a lot more comfortable after a month or so. Your fingers aren't used to moving around a keyboard and hitting number keys or far away keys from WASD, but force yourself through it and it will feel normal after a week or so. If your fingers are literally too short to reach a certain key, then obviously you'll need to find other keybinds, but don't give up on an easy to reach key because it just feels weird in the beginning because you're not used to it. It takes months to finally feel comfortable with your keybinds, especially if you've never played a PC game before. This brings up the next thing I wanted to discuss, which is muscle memory. Muscle memory is what happens when you practice a certain task. After a while, it becomes easier to do and you don't even have to think about doing it. Even after you haven't done it for a while, if you built muscle memory with it in the past, you'll remember how to do it. Muscle memory is the most important thing about switching to keyboard and mouse. After you pick your keybinds, you want to practice hitting every keybind you can and practice all the main building techniques and combos. When you first start, you'll have trouble doing normal pushes that you could do on controller very easily, but after a week or two, it'll be much easier to do. 
In the beginning, you'll be thinking about hitting which keys, you'll be looking down at your keyboard to make sure you don't mess up, and you'll be misclicking a lot. To build muscle memory as quickly as possible, you need to do two things. First is play and practice as much as you can. Be consistent and just practice hitting different keybinds. Make sure you're practicing using every single keybind you have, from cones to traps to your fifth weapon to your pickaxe. Just practice everything. When I first switched over, I had problems pressing 2 and 4, as I usually misclicked. So for 15 minutes after I played, I went into creative and would practice pulling out my second weapon and my fourth weapon, which are what my 2 and 4 number keybinds were on. After 2 weeks, I never misclicked them again. The more you practice, the better you'll get at whatever you're practicing, so that could be movement, it could be aim, it could be building, it could be editing. You'll suck at all these when you first start because you have no practice or muscle memory built up. Unfortunately, there's no trick or way around this, you just have to practice and practice a lot. What I also did was I would practice moving around and using WASD and my finger placement on my keyboard while I was at my internship over the summer. I know it sounds weird because honestly it was, but while I was filling out Excel spreadsheets I would just rest my fingers in the WASD position. And when I finished my work I would practice hitting random building keybinds. The other thing you want to do to build muscle memory fast is to get enough sleep at night. This is what I didn't do and why it probably took me longer than most of you to get used to my keybinds. I would commute an hour and a half each way to my internships so I would wake up at 6 a.m. and then get home at 6 p.m. This means by the time I ate dinner and spent time with my family, it was already like 9 or 10 p.m. But you know, I was in the grind, so I would be up until like 1 a.m. playing, but that meant that I would go to sleep at like 2 a.m. and then I would get 4 hours of sleep. So I did the first part and played as much as I could, but I wasn't getting enough sleep. If you're not sleeping at least 7 or 8 hours, your brain will have trouble retaining all this new practice and muscle memory, so be sure you're getting enough sleep and don't be like me. So to sum the video up, find a good mouse and keyboard that fits your budget, your play style, and your desk space. Then find good keybinds from my other video, and finally build the muscle memory that you need by practicing and getting enough sleep. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. This video shoutouts go to Nightmare, Luco Privsy, NiceG21, Longhair Marvin, It's Broden Gaming, AP23, Zilka, Astralex, Vlizzez, Brisson, Agung, Dexter, Clapsies, Rami, Chris, Vague Croc, Harrison Shaw, A Very Bad Place, and Sub to PewDiePie. <laughs> um, otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.